Hello, makers, and welcome back to the studio. Now, we worked on a project a couple of videos ago where we were swiping paint and we were learning how to mask large areas of the paper we were working. You can see that video here if you've not seen it yet. And I want to return to that concept today. I want to talk a little bit more about how we can create an unusual shaped piece of art by using a paint swiping technique. And it's going to require us to do some more masking. So I have my paper here that I'm going to be working on. This is a piece of, of 18 inch by 24 inch heavy duty watercolor paper by Strathmore. And again, the link will be in the description below for all the materials that we'll be using. I have an assortment of colors here, depending on uh, what my needs are. I have all of my, uh, well, not all of it. I have a lot of paint, it turns out, but I have a lot of different colors for the Craftsmart paints that we're gonna be using for this as well. I find these are great swiping paints, so we'll be able to do that. I have my trusty roll of, uh, of Scotch Magic Tape, which is gonna be super handy for what we're doing. And I'm also working with some copier or just printer paper. I'm gonna use this to help us with our masking efforts. And of course, uh, for what we need to do later, I have a squeegee and we'll talk about that. And this is a, this is a special squeegee that's used for screen printing. You can use a shower squeegee for this. It's not gonna make a big difference in the outcome for what we're doing. But the first thing I wanna think about is uh, what do I wanna do here with my piece of paper and set it up? And here's the general concept. What I would love to be able to do here is find a way to create kind of an unusual shape on my paper. Now, if I were to come in here and do an abstract, you know, painting of some sort, I might say, okay, let's kind of, you know, we'll have a shape and it's going to sit in the middle of this paper. And I want to do something not unlike that, but since we're going to be smearing paper, but paint, I should say, paint down this paper, it's going to be really hard to figure out where that paint goes. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to basically set some parameters of where the paint will go by creating some masking. Now, I'm gonna be using some, like I said, some copier paper here. It allows me to just to come in here and say, all right, what are kind of the angles and areas that I want to mask out? And of course that means what are the areas I wanna include in here? By the way, I'm gonna, since I'm doing white on white here and I realize you guys can't see it very well, I'm gonna just come in here and uh, put some color on my copier paper. There we go. So you can see which, which is which. That's gonna make it a little bit easier. And I'm going to come in here, and again, there is no right answer here. I'm going to play this by ear. A lot of what I'm doing here is just a bold experiment. So let's, uh, let's, let's experiment here. I'm going to come in here, and uh, let me get a piece of tape that I can work with here. And I am going to use it to basically tape this piece of paper down. Now, the real line is going to be my tape line, right? Because that's where the paint is not going to stick. So there's... My piece of paper here and then a little bit of a paint line here. I can see it sort of. I can't imagine you can see it very well on the camera at all. So that makes it a little bit more challenging. And you know what? I think I also want to work with this plane here being one of my boundaries. So again, if I get my, my tape here and let's drop this down this side and we'll lay it right in there like that. In there. Now, again, I might want to go in, you know, get my eyes pretty close to this and make sure that I don't have really weird or ugly corners. And there are different things we can do. I'm not going to spend a lot of time worrying about it here. We can also come in later on and kind of paint things up if we need to. But that's kind of fun. That's kind of fun. Let me grab another piece of copier paper. And uh, let's say that we actually are going to kind of move the angle. So we have kind of a zigzag thing going here. And I'm going to do the same thing with my tape. Let's just Pull this out, and I'm going to run it down like this to the bottom of my paper. You can't see the bottom right here, but uh, there it is. So we have something coming in here, and then it's being picked up here. So the good news is, is that if I were to come and smear paint in this direction, there's a lip here on the tape all the way around that's going to prevent it from getting underneath what we're doing here. So that's going to actually just create a seam between my little pieces of paper here. So again, nothing can possibly sneak through. So we have this kind of interesting zigzag going here. Let me, uh, let me do the same thing kind of going this way. And uh, I'm gonna take that guy down. You find your own technique for how to, <laughs> how to manage scotch tape. I, you know, to be honest with you, one of the bigger things you'd have to deal with, depending also what time of year it is and where you are, is just sometimes the, 
the uh, static electricity makes it so hard to work with because when you take it off, it suddenly just, you know, has a life of its own, wants to stick to your body or, or you know, it's like a balloon stuck to you. It's a little, a little challenging sometimes. All right, those are kind of fun. So we have, again, we're creating kind of a shape that looks like this. Let's see what we want to do uh, here. I'm going to put a slight angle on it like that. That'll be kind of fun. And uh, let's try a different technique. I'm going to keep it on the reel this time. Let me bring it up to the top. And let me bring it down like that. That actually worked out pretty nicely. That way the, the tape doesn't have a life of its own. And uh, by the way, just for the sake of helping you guys to see what the heck's going on here, let me just show where all of our copier paper is. Let's hit this with a marker. There we go. All right. Now... Again, how I want to work this is entirely up to me. I am thinking I might create a shape that goes a little bit steeper of an angle. Let's do the same thing we did before, kind of hold my paper down there and we'll create a line. Come on, work with me. All right, and sometimes you just say, you know what, uh, that was, I learned something along the way. I. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a learning experience if you're open to it. Sometimes it just doesn't go according to plan. So let me uh, there, I'll get that side taped down, make it easier to kind of manage where I, my tape and paper go. Beautiful. All right, not unhappy. Get that smoothed down. Let me just get this piece of paper marked again so you guys can see it better. And I think we have uh, maybe one more that will kind of fit this. I already have an automatic uh, paint line over here. But uh, maybe maybe we'll just kind of cross cross it right there. So, yeah, whatever the shape is, is the, is the shape that's going to end up being the one on the paper. And let's see. Did that work? Good. That that worked. That worked. I know it's a little bit off there. Can't see that. But uh, we have masked that top. All right. And by the way, I'm going to pull this down just a little bit because I do want you to see where the uh, where the, the paint's going to be going being put in. So again, uh, you know, my thought here is I want to be able to drag the paint from point to point. There's, by the way, who's to say I can't put all the paint here and, and drag it over here to the left or drag things right? Uh, we can do whatever the heck we want to do here. Um, a little weird notch there. Well, I'll worry about it. I'll worry about it later. There we go. So now I really want to think about how I layer and put my paints in here so that we can squeegee them and kind of do things with them. And is it one pass? Is it multiple passes going in different directions? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, let's come in here and uh, we're going to do what we did in our previous video is I'm going to work with a lot of dots. I think the dot pattern is kind of fun. And again, I can put the, I can put the paper, uh, the paint, I should say, that I'm thinking of dragging outside of my painted area, or I can put it inside of my painted area. I'm going to get different effects as a result of what I do here. I'm going to lay down some, uh, some dark blue here. This will give us Kind of a foundation of look and feel. And again, when we're dealing with colors like this, again, thinking about how we mix these colors together and what kind of themes emerge. I'm getting a little sloppy there. Maybe I can not squeeze it so hard. How about that? There we go. I like that. So that's not a bad thing. Uh, let's get some bright yellow in there. That will that really contrasts well with this blue as, as we're kind of layering colors in. And what you put in here, entirely up to you, like I said, you might want to uh, have a whole family of colors. Maybe you have a whole bunch of blues that really play well together and you want to create something kind of a, in a blue theme. And you may also have something in another color, right? Color family like greens or reds or whatever works for you. I'm going to put some yellow over here. And again, we'll get different effects depending on how we're smearing things, which direction we're smearing and where we're smearing from and... Some of this is really left up to chance, right? Because we don't get a lot of control as to what the final piece is going to look like. We're going to be as surprised as anybody when this is done. But the, it, reveals, uh, it reveals differently, different times. I'm getting a little... My paint is going sideways down the top here. All right, how are we doing color-wise? 
I think that's good. That yellow is actually a pretty strong color overall. Uh, let's get some, uh, some, what do we have? Let's some turquoise here. Get some turquoise in this mix as well. Get some color there and there and there. Just hitting these uh, kind of empty spaces with my new dots. And I'm, I'm listening to the colors in the paper talk to me and say, what would you like to see here? What will work out well for you? Let's get some turquoise there and up here. All right, I think that's gonna work for us. And I'm thinking now like an orange color would really help here. And I do, I have, uh, I have dark orange. Dark orange. We'll get it up here. I'm not sure how I'm going to smear this yet, to be honest. I may do some sort of swoopy thing. Uh, and who says to say, who says we can't do a swoopy thing, right? There are no rules here, kids. It's entirely up to us, and uh, we get to call the shots. So happy to have that freedom. And you know what? The worst thing that can happen is we create something we don't like. That's really it. I mean, but whenever, whenever we create something we don't like, we can always say, you know what? I learned something in the process. That's one of the beautiful things about doing art. I would say on average, when I create artwork, that out of five pieces, three of them are good. You know, one of them may be like, wow, that really turned out better than I thought. Then there's like two, two might be, well, those are okay. Those turned out well. And then there's like, eh, I don't really like this. And then there's the, I don't like this at all. And you kind of get used to the fact that, oh, all right, that... That kind of sucks. And it's okay. It's okay to not love everything you create. And instead of saying, well, you know, I made it, I need to keep it. No, you don't. You could say, this was a laboratory. I, I came in here, I did some experimenting. You know what? Turns out it didn't work. It didn't work. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take what I learned. I'm going to move forward. And the next time I do this, it'll be even better. I'm going to put some uh, olive green in here too. Again, kind of a different color family from what we have. And we'll see how that enhances things. And again, I think this might be our last color since we're getting a little, a little saturated. And I'm still kind of in the back of my mind thinking about how do I want to do this? I think I'm going to do some sort of kind of a, a, an S, an S sweep down this, if that makes sense. I'm going to create some curves with my squeegee. And let's, again, we'll see what happens. It might be a glorious, glorious accident that emerges. It might be a, a learning experience. It might be uh, I can't believe I've just made the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. You sometimes never know. All right, anything else? You know what? Let me just put another dot of green right up here. Okay. Well, there we are. All right, so it's like drum roll, please. It is, uh, it is time uh, for us to just, uh, yeah, commit to this. So again, a thought is kind of doing something like this. And uh, I don't think I've ever done kind of an S, S sweep before. Now, some of the paint I have is outside of my painted area. A lot of the paint is inside my painted area. What I do know from experience is that where the paint has been sitting on the paper, those dots are actually going to show up and be fairly dominant around the smears. And the ones that are outside of it are going to create more of just of adding color to kind of fill in the remaining white space. But um, what I want to also make sure, because this is going to be very important, is that I have my roll of paper towels uh, close at hand, because when I get down here at the bottom, I'm going to want to uh, certainly wipe my squeegee off to begin with, but also make sure that I don't get any paint on any other part of this artwork. I, I have a little bit of white showing through here and up here. I don't want to get any paint in there and, and try not to get it on my clothes. Clothes. And by the way, uh, how many articles of clothing do I have with paint on them? All of them. Uh, it kind of goes with the territory. All right. It's time. Take a deep breath. Hail Mary. Let's come on in here and uh, let's see what kind of thing we can do. I may actually have to hold this down. And let's come in and see what happens if we create a bit of a sweep. That is kind of weird. That is kind of gloriously strange. Now, again, what I'm seeing is, you know, what happens when you smear paint down a piece of paper. Let me wipe off my squeegee here. Try to get that anywhere. All right. 
And uh, I'm going to, yeah, kind of weird, kind of fun. Again, it's going to look very different once we get the masking off of here. So I'm going to, I'm going to try to figure out how to, the best way to do this. And again, I think kind of working backward. Um, this was the last piece I put in. So let me take that off first. Again, I grab the tape up here and yeah, once we, once we take that, the masking off, you see those clean lines. That's just a, such a happy moment. Like, whoa, that's going to look, that's going to look good. Okay. So there's one piece off. Uh, I guess we're going to go back around the way we came. And so this guy up here is coming off as well. Nice. And then this one here. Oh, that was our first piece. Um, all right, let's see if I can just undo it this way. And undo this one this way. Sometimes when I work, I'll put down a, uh, uh, like a canvas drop cloth. You can put plastic drop cloth. So seriously, if you go to your big box, you know, hardware stores, uh, you can get some drop cloths. I find sometimes it's just nice to put it under your desk if you're working with paints, certainly under your, under your, uh, your canvas and your easel uh, on a regular basis. And, you know, unless you, unless you want to get paint on, <laughs> on your carpeting or your floors or the cat or anything else like that, in which case I'm not telling you how to live. You can, you can do it your way. But I find it's just nicer when you don't have to deal with that. All right, let's get this edge in here. And how are we doing? All right. Wow. Wow, what an interesting thing. Again, once you get the masking off, you really get a completely different sense of what this is all about. It's very cool. Now, I do have one little thing that's, uh, and I knew it was going to be a problem, and it kind of sticks in my craw just a little bit. And that's right here. You can actually see the edge of the tape that I used and see the little, actually, the perforations on the tape where the cutter got to it. Now, that could be just a, hey, isn't that kind of cool feature? Or it might be the kind of thing um, you want to jump in and enhance in some way. So what I may do with this is I may just take a paintbrush and maybe just kind of smooth that out a little bit. Um, I think I'm probably going to just leave it alone and no one's ever going to notice. Yeah, one of the things, by the way, and I'll just share this with you, Whenever you're creating anything, artwork or, you know, crafts or writing a book, there's always going to be things about it that you don't love. And uh, take it take it from my experience. Uh, I've never finished writing a book in my life because you always get to the end and you say, well, I could rewrite this. And if I did it again, I'd do it differently. So the simple reality is that just kind of take a breath, be satisfied with what you have. And again, in the future, you'll be able to take those lessons and, and bring them forward. But in something like this, if I look at that and say, well, there's a flaw there, but that's just to my eyes. You may look at this and having never seen it before and think, wow, that little cutout notch, kind of interesting. It draws your eye to it. It actually adds some extra texture, which we may not have thought about, right? So there's some pretty cool things that we can do, again, the happy accidents that happen. But you don't have to fret over any little flaws. Your, your artwork's going to have flaws. And if somebody says, I like your work, you don't want to go and say, well, let me show you all the things that are wrong with it. <laughs> there's this, there's this, challenge sometimes to just clamp your jaw shut and go, let me tell you about all the things that are broken with this thing. No, just say, hey, thank you. Thank you. Is it perfect? No. Has anyone ever created perfect art ever? Probably not, right? There's always something that the artist would say, if I had to do this over again, I'd do this differently. So, so that's cool. Now, again, you know, I'm looking at the white space. Did we want, I kind of like how that worked out. Right? It kind of like these tendrils, the color combinations. Again, you can choose your own. Would I go in here and enhance this with additional colors? Maybe drop some red dots in it? Maybe. I think in this case, I'm just going to be grateful for what came out and that the masking here worked. It's kind of an interesting piece. I'm not sure I'm going to put this in the gallery because I think this is still more of a, a, a kind of a, an experiment or a work in progress. But I think it's an interesting place for us to be able to explore. Again, we're starting with just a basic sheet of paper. What we put on that paper is entirely up to us. There's no right answers here. And in this case, I found a shape that was kind of fun. I put some paint in a certain pattern, and this is the result. I may actually stick this up on my wall. I don't know. One of the things that I will do, by the way, is I'll take something like this and I'll hang it on the wall in my studio. 
and I'll be able to look at it for a while. And over time, as it's hanging there on the wall, I can look at that and say, hmm, if I were to change this or adjust this in some way, this is what I'd like to adjust. And your brain will tell you over time, you know what would be really good here? Red, right? Or something like that. Or you know what? That shape is okay, but it could be even more interesting if you did this. And so you kind of sock that away for future. Or you may just put it on the wall and over time, you may grow to really like it. You might look at, hey, this is actually growing on me and it turns out I like this piece an awful lot. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for your time and, and being here with this. And if you really enjoyed this project and want to do things like this in the future, we have a lot more one-hour masterpieces coming your way. Just an opportunity for you to sit down with me and to say, what happens if we do this, this, and this, and to follow along? We try to make the project simple to follow, easy, not expensive. You don't need lots of equipment and materials to do what we're doing here. We're going to make it real easy for you to, to be able to do that. And whatever you come up with, you know, good for you. That's why we're here. We want you to follow along and unleash your inner artist. That's the goal. Anyway, I'm Spider. Thanks so much for spending time with us today, and I'll talk to you soon.